Psalm 37, verse 23 and verse 24. I'll read verse 23 and then read verse 24 along with me in unison. Psalm 37 verse 23 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Come on, read with me. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Amen. Father, thank you for this opportunity to preach and teach your word today. I ask that you give me utterance, articulation, revelation. Think through my mind, speak through my mouth. Take that which we know of the natural and let it be transposed supernaturally by the spirit of God to bring light to dark places, to cause faith all the more to increase that no matter where we are, what we've done, where we've been, how far we've been knocked back up, this is our comeback day. In Jesus' name, amen. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. You may be seated. And he delighteth in his way, and though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. That word which says shall not be utterly cast down, that means the camera's still rolling. That means stay tuned because he won't be down forever and he won't be down long. Why? Because the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. That verse from the... New Living Translation says, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. I love that. That God is involved in the intricate details of my life. Come on, y'all know the reason why, you know, you'd rather go to somebody else uh, who don't know you rather than come to the pastor and know you because you don't want the pastor in your business. And I don't, we don't want to talk to them and say, and I tell you, if you don't get help here, just get help somewhere, okay? But we don't want people involved in the details of our lives. Though. We, like, we want to look like the families on the funeral fan at the other church. Okay, you all know we don't have those here. You use your hand, okay? Uh, you know, you all know the families on the funeral fan. They, they, they say, I, I grew up in church, had the funeral, and, and sometimes they all had their hands like this. And they all just be looking up at the sky, something like they're all praying together. You know, look like the perfect family. We don't want people involved in details of our lives. But the New Living Translation says that God delights in every detail of our lives. Then verse 24 says, though they stumble, they will never fall. They stumble, but they'll never fall. So fall here means be totally laid out for good. For the Lord holds them by his hand. That verse from the Message Translation says, if he stumbles, he's not down for long. God has a grip on his hand. Though he stumbles, if he's, he's not down for long. Look, somebody say, I won't be down long. I won't be down. <laughs> when Tiger Woods won the Masters last year in 2019, we saw one of the greatest comeback, not only in the history of golf, but in the history of sports, not only because of golf, but he had had like four back surgeries. Hadn't played in two years. Tried to play and had to drop out. Had the sex scandal. Then uh, had uh, got a DUI from a combination of, of painkillers that, that had him under the influence. But that's not what we're thinking about with Tiger Woods right now because he had a comeback. And so today, I want to preach about the art of a comeback. The art of a comeback. If you follow me on social media, you saw I went down and I saw the UFC game yesterday. Everybody was busy, so I went by myself, took myself on a date. That's, that's all right. You know, some of y'all say, I, don't, I can't stand being by myself. You can't be by yourself. Why should anybody want to be with you? You don't even like yourself. And... Uh, truth of the matter is while I was there uh, in case in case you if you ever y'all ever go down to the game just want to let you know I just got to get a little plug here and she can give me he or she whoever they are can give me some money for it if they want but it's in it's all the way in the back I usually come we come in the front but all the way in the back is Kiki's chicken and waffle I found that out by accident during the during the during the um, during Mars Madness I had some I had some dry cardboard pizza 
I was hungry. And we were there. I think Brother Will, uh, we, we were there, and uh, I had some dry, and I, I was mad. You know how you're hungry? You're hungry, and then you get, and the food ain't good, now you're mad? You went from hungry to, to, to hangry. And then all of a sudden, this guy came and, came and sat down. Oh, he, was, he was across the aisle from me. I said, I had to see. And I looked, I saw that this guy had some, had some nice juicy chick fried chicken wing. I said, where you get that from? He said, Kiki's. I said, Ki you brought that over? He said, no, it's all the way around. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> so when I got, before I even got to my seat yesterday, I went all the way around the back. And most people don't even know it's there because it's in, in the back. And I got me some Kiki's uh, 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 wings and fries. And then I sat down in the game and I started I, I basically went there for lunch and I had my phone out preparing my message and the reason why I was doing that because from the time I sat down we were up South Carolina was up 10 then we was up 20 then we was up 25 and the game wasn't even competitive if it's not too competitive it's hard to keep your attention I think God lets us go through some challenging times sometimes so he can just keep our attention. He got to keep us interested. got to keep us focused on him. The truth of the matter, I, I miss some real good dunks. You know, at some point the game, you, you know, when you're up so much, you see people play who don't usually play, you know. And then when they in there, hey, hey this, I got to take my shot. Yeah, that, that's, one of the, that's one of the songs in, in Hamilton, my shot. And so, so when people get in there, they, they were doing stuff, and it was alley-oops going on and back dunks and all, all this kind of And some of them I missed because it wasn't too competitive. But everybody likes to see a comeback. Everybody likes to see a comeback. To come back is to regain your former favorable condition or position. To come back is to retire from a deficit in a contest or competition. What really got me thinking about this week, me and Brother Beckford here, uh, I, I don't know if we really got too many other real tennis fans here. Any, any other tennis fans here? Just, just, just so I know. All right. About five of us here. Okay. Um, but we, we, we're tennis fans. You all know I, I've flown around the world just to watch tennis. I've gone there. Well, no, I t went around the world to take my wife. to take my wife to Paris. We just had, the French Open just happened to be going on at that time. Take my wife to New York. The U.S. Open just happened to be going. We went to London and Wimbledon just happened to be ha going on at the same time that we've, uh, that we've gone. But this week, uh, the, the U.S. Open has been going on for the last two weeks. And uh, Brother Beckford told me he stays up and watches it. Now, I got to go to sleep. They are like, they're like, they are day ahead of us. So, uh, 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 3 o'clock in the afternoon here is something like 7 in the morning the next day there. I think because they're like 12, 13, 14, 15 hours uh, ahead of us. And so, I've been watching most of them on, I, I record it, and I've been watching the, or the next day. But I watched a match this week with one of the all-time greats, Roger Federer. And when I tuned in to the match, it was the, it was the fourth set. Those of you who don't know about tennis, you get, it's, the, it's, it's the best out of three. And men, and, and, I mean, best, best out of six. And men play, uh, uh, men, men, can, men can play up to five sets. Women play three, and it's two out of three. And so men, uh, men you got to win three out of five. And so we, 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 we get down here. And it is the, it's the fourth set. It's, it's the fourth set, and Roger Federer is losing to an American I didn't even know. But he was beating the bricks off of Roger Federer. And as he's playing, he gets down in the fourth set, to the fourth match, to two match points. Match point simply means you just win one more and this is over. One more point, this is over. And some kind of way, he couldn't close it. Roger Federer forced it to a fifth 
set and then came back and won. It was amazing. But that's what champions do. Champions learn to come back. Look at somebody and say, you sitting by a champion. You, you expect champions to come back. Okay? I, I, I've seen champions win to the degree that I almost think they playing a rope and dope like Muhammad Ali Lee used to do. For those of you who don't know about boxing, remember Muhammad Ali? Muhammad Ali used to call him in and he would lay against the rope and just let him pound on him. And he'd go back and lay against the rope. And they would just, and he, he, we, the, the jungle, the, the uh, rumbling jungle with, with George Foreman, he did that. And George Foreman, I mean, George, George wearing himself out. He, he's, I mean, he getting all he got. And, and, uh, and Muhammad Ali, and, and he just kept hitting him, hitting him, hitting him. And then after he tied himself out, Muhammad Ali started floating like a butterfly <laughs> and stinging like a bee. And it sometimes it, can, it looks like God, it looks like the law of the evil look like he allows us to be beat because he wants you to have a comeback. Your setback is a setup for your comeback. Say that. Say, my setback is a setup for my comeback. There, there was another match this week, and I got to move on. Um, uh, uh, Keenan, I haven't seen that match yet because I haven't watched it, but Keenan, a young American girl, 21 years old, who ends up winning the, 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 the Australian Open, uh, she, there, was, there was a match where she was down. And, I was, and here, here's a quote from a reporter. It said, despite being down, Keenan had never seemed scared. Her self-belief poured out of her like sweat under the closed roof at the Rod uh, Laver Arena. She simply adjusted her game and refused to quit. You didn't catch that. Sometimes you got to adjust your game. You got to see what's working and what's not working and learn how to adjust your game. It said, Keenan ran down and reacted to every single point as if it was match point and the one that determined her fate. I want you to know that today that God specializes in helping those who trust in him to make a comeback. If we always do the right things, the truth of the matter is, we don't have to fall. If we always do the right things, we'll never stumble. If you always do the right thing, you won't need a comeback. That's the truth, but look at it. Look at 2 Peter, first chapter, verse 10. 2 Peter 1 and verse 10. Go ahead and get a quick read. I didn't give you that one. It says, wherefore, the rather, brethren, 2 Peter 1 and 10, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Because if you do these things, you shall what? Oh, no, read what it says. You shall what? So, it says, so the Bible says, and it tells us the things that we need to add to our spiritual development. And it says if we add these things, and he said then we'll never be unfruitful in our knowledge of the Lord. And then it goes on to say if we, if we are diligent enough and we make our calling and our election sure, if you do these things, if you always do the right thing, you shall never fall. There's only one problem with that. We don't always do the right things. I ain't talking about y'all in this section. I'm talking about that section. They don't always do the right things, and they don't always do the right things, and, yeah, there's probably some of y'all in this section, too, who don't always do the right thing. And there's people here on this platform, and we don't always do the right things. If we always did the right thing, we will never fall, because the Bible says we don't have to fall. The Amplified says you'll never stumble or fall. But the text gives us a promise that God will order our steps, and though he fall, I mean, if I fall, I'm not going to be utterly cast down. I'm not going to just, just, just lay on my back. The devil is alive. Y'all remember that old, that, 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 that commercial? I'm, I'm not, I used to just really fall out. I'm a little older now, so I ain't going to fall out. I'm just going to lay out. Okay. Y'all remember that commercial? I've fallen. And I can't get up. The devil is alive. Look, somebody say, I'm getting up. I'm getting up. 
None of this, I'm falling, I can't get up. No, I'm getting up. I'm not going to die in this position. I'm not going to get atrophy in this position. I'm going to keep on moving. I'm going to keep on wiggling until I get out of this situation. I don't, if I got to if I gotta pull myself up, if I got to fight my way up, I'm not going to stay in this situation because I'm coming back. I'm going to regain that place that I used to be. God specializes in helping those who trust him to make a comeback. But you can't have a comeback unless you've fallen back. You can't have come back unless you've been knocked back. Sometimes the circumstances of life can knock you down. Sometimes the circumstances of life can knock you back. And sometimes it's our own carelessness. It's our own bad decisions. It's, on, it's our own uh, dumb choices. That can cause us to fall and be knocked down. But here's the good news. Regardless of why you got knocked down or knocked back, the word to the Lord to you today is that you can have a comeback. God specializes in helping those who trust him to make a comeback. Jesus expects you to make a comeback. Jesus told Peter before, one of his last final words to Peter, before the crucifixion, he says, Peter, Satan has desired you. He's asked for permission to attack you like he did Job. Satan has desired to have you because he want to sift you as wheat. He want to take all the good out of you and leave you with the bad. He wants to take all the godliness out of you and just lead you, leave you with your inclinations of your flesh. He said, that's what Satan wants to do. But then he goes on and say, he said, but Peter, I want you to understand, go on. He said, but I prayed for you. Man, that's good to know right now. If, if you, every now and then you ought to read John 17, because in John 17, Jesus prayed for us. Come on, come on. Uh, we, we were praying for Minister Angel, and Minister Joyce was praying Minister Angel, and I thank God that we prayed, but my God, Jesus prayed for me. He said, Peter, I pray that your faith fail you not. So if Jesus prayed that my faith fail me not, then my faith don't have to fail. Because Jesus once said, whatever I ask the Father, he does it. <laughs> Y'all are catching it. Y'all are catching this. If Jesus prayed that our faith don't fail, then our faith don't have to fail. Because Jesus prayed for Peter, but Jesus prayed for us. He said, and he said, and when you're converted, strengthen your brother. Yeah, now wait, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Huh? I pray that your faith fail you not. That's my prayer. I pray my faith fail you not. He said, and, but when you're converted, it seems like there's something here between faith failing and not and, and, and you're being converted. That word converted means when you're changed. When you get yourself together, when you get back up again, he said, now I'm praying that you don't fall. I'm praying that you don't fail. He said, but you just might. You might do something stupid. You might make a mistake. You might give it to wrong people. You might make a bad decision. You may not have walked and you might, you might have went left when you went should have went right. You might have went north when you should have went south. He said, but he says, but when you're converted, when you get yourself back together, then strengthen your brother, help somebody else. In other words, Jesus already predicted you're gonna have a comeback. <laughs> when? Not if you're converted, not if you get that word converted means you're changed. You get back up. It means you're strengthened. He said, when you're converted, get back up. He said, now go help somebody else. So you must know that it's not a matter of if you come back, it's when you come back. Come on, somebody who, who didn't have a fall back or knock back, say, when I come back, I'm coming back better. I'm coming back stronger. Proverbs 24, 16. It says, a just man falleth seven times. Proverbs 24, 16. A just man falls seven times. I'm so glad it just didn't end there. You know, it's like, it's like I, 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 heard, I know this preacher who got some issues. And, or had some issues, I believe, he's over his issues. But he, he, he used to uh, overhear him say, 
<laughs> he said, uh, the Bible said young men say only fall. The Bible said young men say only fall. You know, we say, you know, the Bible said young, yeah, some went through it, but the Bible said young men say only fall. But I'm like, will you keep reading the scripture? It didn't just, that ain't, that ain't where the scripture is. The Bible said young men say only fall, but they that wait. <laughs> on the Lord said what? Renew their strength. Come on, th th don't stay in the falling state. I know, I, I, I just went to another scripture, but stay right there. I went to another one right now. Young men, but they, but they the way the Lord shall renew their strength. That's your mount up. That sounds like a comeback. So this scripture here, he said, the just man falls down seven times, but he rises again. You don't have to stay waddling in your mistake. You don't have to stay waddling in your, in, in your downfall. You don't have to stay waddling in that bad choice you made. You don't have to stay waddling and say, it's over. God can't use me. I don't know what I'm going to do now because the, the, the word goes on to say, but he rises up again. He said, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Now, now notice that. He said, the wicked shall fall. Don't say about the wicked rising. But the just man, the righteous, those who live by faith, those who want to please God, those who have right standing with God, those who have Christ in you, the hope of glory, those of us who have this treasure in this earthen vessel, we got something in us that won't let us stay down. Ah, my God. The Bible says if the spirit of, G of Jesus raised in you lives in you also, it's also going to quicken your mortal body. It, you can't stay down if the Holy Ghost is in you. You can't stay down if God is in you. You can't stay down because the old, the old, old folks, the older people, the former people, the people used to say, something down inside of me telling me to go ahead. Glory to God. I, I want to give up. I want to lay here. It seemed like it would be easier to lay here than to move, than to fight. But something down inside of me telling me to go ahead, tells me to get up from here. Get up. Get up. You know, you know in, in, the, in the early days of our, of our ministry, you know, we, we older now. We, we, we don't really care what people think and say. We ain't got nothing to prove. But back in, a, back in our, uh, we were down on River Drive. Uh, not River Drive, supposed to work at Union Hall. Pastor Mar said, nice heels one day and looked real nice. And she walked in and she fell. She slipped and fell. Bam! I mean, and I, I was so shocked. I couldn't even help her up. I said, get up. Get up. But that was just the voice of the Lord trying to encourage her you don't have to lay there you can get up come on the voice of God is always telling you, get up get up don't stay here God wants you to have a comeback but as I said there's an art to a comeback and art means it's there's a skill at doing a specific thing art is a skill at doing a particular thing Okay, uh, it's typically, uh, this art is acquired through practice. We refer to this also as a, as a skill, a craft, or technique. So there is a skill to coming back. There is a craft to come. There's a technique that comes back. And so even in preparation of this message, I studied and reviewed and analyzed great comebacks. And I observed that all great comebacks have certain similarities and characteristics, and I just want to talk about a couple in the time I have. Number one, you got to have a comeback mentality. People that come back have a comeback mentality. Some people refer to this as a winning mentality. Those of us who are old enough to remember the first Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger had a famous line in there that said I'll be back it's something about people who come back who have been thinking I'll be back everybody wrote Tiger Woods off this is over why is he even trying I don't want I don't, I don't want to speak me and me and the uh, brother Beck we were talking about it yesterday there's a particular tennis player she won a major a couple years ago, and she ain't won since. And I've been saying, she just, 
you know, and she in love now and everything, and most of the time just showing her ring off and how in love she is, okay? But she ain't winning, and she's getting knocked out real early. Now, I've been saying, just go ahead and get married and go ahead and have, because I read an article, she said you want to get married and have a baby. Go ahead and get married and have a baby. That's what I'm saying. And I said, just go on about your business somewhere. But go, just, just, if you ain't going to win, <laughs> you're not going to act like you want to win because her attitude don't even look like she want to win. Look like I'm just there to get, get a little check and keep my flow going and keep it moving, okay? But at the end of the day, y'all know it don't matter what I say. I can have my opinion. It does not matter what I say. It doesn't matter what I think. What's going to cause her to have a comeback and win again after winning that major a few years ago is that she got to have a winning mentality. Okay? Perhaps the comeback mentality is best expressed in the words of Kobe Bryant as the Mamba mentality. I was hearing so much about the Mamba mentality this week that I had to go look up. So get me, let me get a little more details about this Mamba mentality. So Kobe Bryant has a book, which is sold out now. What probably wasn't sold out last week, sold out now. Wrote a a book, and it's a picturesque book of the Mamba mentality, and he says this in there. He says, uh, he, and somebody asked him to describe what's this Mamba mentality. He said, here's the Mamba mentality. If you see me in a fight with a bear, pray for the bear. That's a Mamba mentality. He said, I've always loved that quote. That's Mamba mentality. We don't quit, we don't cower, we don't run. Say that, say I won't quit, I won't cower, and I won't run. Goes on to say, we endure and conquer. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Find the silver lining and get to work with the same belief, same drive, and same conviction as ever. Mamba out. So he called that the Mamba. It's, it's this not, not quitting attitude. Come on, come on. If, if, and, 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 you know, I don't know that he was a great man of faith in terms of talking faith all the time anyway. But, but if, come on, if he can talk about that in his own ability. If he can have that type of attitude with, with, with knowing if, uh, I, I, I was looking at an interview one time. He says, I shoot, he said, I shoot a thousand free throws a day. A thousand. I don't know if I do anything a thousand times a day other than breathe. He's saying, if I know, if I put in the work, if I have the right mindset, how much more for those of us who are filled with the Holy Ghost got a mind to run on and see what the end going to be in these last end evil days we save and sanctify and fill with the Holy Ghost and that with a mighty burning fire all these things we say and yet we won't get up we still talking about the job we had 10 years ago we still talking about when I was married and you think you can't recover from a bad marriage a bad divorce I'm here to tell you if you're here you still can recover. God didn't leave you here to wallow. He left you here to recover. I know somebody died and you've been grieving for a while, but the fact that you're not in the grave with them, God plans on you having recovery. You got to make up in your mind, I shall live and not die. Come on, you got to get like these people all of a sudden get spiritual after the card and flipped over three times. Everybody gets spiritual when that happens and say, the Lord got me here for a reason. You need to know God got you here for a reason. You need to know God does not want you wallowing. He doesn't want you to pity party. He wants you to get up. <laughs> Got to have a comeback mentality. Kobe went on, Brian went on to say, say, if you play Kobe one-on-one, -on -one, make sure your scoreboard has capacity to read three-digit numbers. <laughs> I like this one. Kobe said, if Kobe is being sought for tax evasion, pray for the IRS. 
Y'all ain't hearing me here. Come on, come on. That's, come on. Now, 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 that, that's somebody even saying Jesus. No, what he's saying, whatever battle I'm in, I'm going to win. I don't care how bad the odds are against me, I'm going to win. I'm going to come back. I'm going to get up. I'm going to go through. I'm going to be the last man standing. I'm going to be on top because I'm supposed to be the head and not the tail. I'm supposed to be above and not beneath. I'm supposed to be blessed going in, and I'm supposed to be blessed going out. Glory to God. If the enemy come against me one way, he's going to flee seven ways. The devil going to regret ever having messed with me because I am the comeback kid hallelujah that's that comeback mentality so comeback starts with your thinking we hear it over and over and over and over in this church Proverbs 23 and 7 for as he thinketh in his heart so is he you a loser because you think like a loser you're a winner because you think like a winner you're average because you think average you're rich because you think rich Walter D. Single wrote a poem that many of us know, particularly those of us who were, went through Greek life, the man who thinks he's king. And one of the, the last uh, stanza or verse of the poem says, life's battles don't always go to the stronger or the faster man, but sooner or later, the man who wins is the fellow who thinks he can. Somebody say, I think I can. So winning is a mentality, losing is a mentality, and coming back is a mentality. Keep it, you got to keep your head. You got to keep your head. That was, that's what uh, Rudyard Kipling said in his poem, If. He said, you, you must keep your head when all about you are losing theirs. So winning mentality is also about keeping your head. Keeping your head means making up your mind before, during, and after. After the game, making up your mind before, during, and after the battle, making up your mind before, during, and after the fight that you will not give up. Galatians 6 and 9 tells us as believers, Paul writes to the church of, of Galatia and he says, be not weary in well-doing because in due season you shall reap if you faint not. He said, you can't afford to get tired. The, the, the truth of the matter is, you know, we all get tired. Just some of us talk about it more than others. You know, think about it. We all get tired. Some people talk about it more than others. You ever see people every time you, every time you say, I'm just so, oh, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. And, and then they, they talk about being tired so much. You get tired of them being tired. And just being around them make you tired. I'm just, I'm just so, I'm so tired. We all get tired. Some people talk about it more than others. Some people just keep moving through their fatigue. Some people push on despite being tired. Some people say, listen, I'm too broke to be tired. Miles to go before I sleep. I got bills to pay. I got debt to be eliminated. I got children to raise. Oh, yeah, I'm, listen, I live in the hood, and the hood ain't getting my kids. I'm a single parent, but just because I'm a single parent does not mean that my child is going to be deprived of anything. I'm going to make sure they get what they need. I'm going to, come on now, they don't let their circumstances determine that they're going to give up. No, their circumstances sometimes push them to do more. When we were at the event with Oprah a couple of weeks ago, she said, uh, and this is how she closed out the day. And she, she, she said this, and it was so profound to me. Her mother was dying. She was in hospice. And she had to fly and go to meetings in New York. And, and she said, a voice said to her, when she, said, when she referred to the Spirit of God, said, uh, said to her, you need to go back and see your mother and get some things straight. You need to go back and say what you need to say. And so she called her sister. Many of us, you don't know her story. Uh, she had a sister she just discovered a few years ago. Her, her mother had tried to keep, keep the, her sister from ever being known. She, she put her, her up for adoption. Didn't want anybody to know that she had a second child, okay, uh, even, even out, out of wedlock. And so, she discovered, and so she called her sister, and she, she told her mother as she's laying there, she said, I want you to know you don't have anything to feel guilty about. She said, everything you put in me is what I needed to become who I am. Whatever you didn't do, put a drive in me to go get it. 
Oh, come on now. See, come on. Some of you, you're going to relieve yourself and release other people by stop blaming your parents and stop blaming your grandmama and stop blaming the society and stop blaming the Republican and stop blaming the Democrat and stop blaming the white man and stop blaming the, the, the Mexican man and stop blaming the black man. You got to say everything I got is what I need and whatever I don't have, I'm going to go get it. Ah. Oh, y'all ain't hear me here. That's that mentality of somebody with a comeback. Everything I got is what I need and whatever I don't have, I'm going to go get it. I could go back and say, well, I didn't, I wasn't raised by my father, but, or, or I could say, I'm going to get a book and I'm going to learn from good fathers how to be fathers. So if you come to my library, you'll see books about how to raise a, a strong-willed child. If, if, you, if you come to my library, you'll see books in there about raising boys. If you come to my library, you'll see books about what every daddy needs to talk to his daughter about. Come on, if I didn't have it, I got to go get it. You can just keep complaining about what you don't have and say, no, I got to go get it. I know I need it, so I got to go get it. Galatians 6 and 9, the New Living Translation says, let's not get tired of doing what's good. At just the right time, you'll reap a harvest of blessing if you don't give up. Amplified says, and let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint and acting nobly and doing right. For in due time, at the appointed season, we shall reap. If we don't loosen and relax our courage and faint. Don't loosen your courage. Don't loosen your hold to what God has shown you. Don't loosen your hold to whatever you got that can pull you out of that situation. There's a scripture in this Bible that says, strengthen the things that remain. I don't, I've lost this, and I lost that, and I don't have this, but I still got this. Glory, you may have lost your car, you may have lost your uh, 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 bay and a boo, okay? You, you may have lost some money, you may have lost a house, but you still got your mind. You still got your faith. Come on now. You still got the activities of your, of your limb. Use whatever you got to get out of your situation. Stop making excuses. I still got this, and this is what I'm going to use, and whatever I got, since God planned on me having to come back, I got what it takes to come back. Secondly, I discovered people come back, and you see this especially in tennis, that... They may have made a bad shot, have what they call an unforced error. You see them walk back. A lot of times to walk back, if there's a camera back there, you'll see they're talking to themselves. Okay? And even while they're, while they're sitting there waiting, you see, they, they talk to themselves. I just imagine stuff that they're saying. Get yourself together. You know you better than that. Don't you miss another shot like that. Come on, when, when, they, when, 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 they, when they come this time, we're going we, we to go straight down the line. We're going we gonna to come on. Uh, when, when they're getting ready to serve, I, I picture the man, they're going to say, now, I'm, I'm going to ace this one right here. He will not hit this. She will not. You got to learn to talk to yourself. So the second characteristic I've seen of a comeback, people, they, they are people who talk to themselves. I said this earlier. It doesn't matter what others are saying to you or about you, but it's vitally important what you say to yourself. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what they say. It matters what you say. It matters what you say to yourself, and it matters what you say about your God. You must keep talking victory to yourself. Ephesians 5 and 19 says, speaking to yourselves, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making a melody in your heart to the Lord. Come on, if we learn to do this, you can battle depression. If you learn to speak to your, speak to one another is, is what New King James, but I like what the traditional King James says. Speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Talk to yourself. Sing to yourself. Glory to God. S do any of y'all sing to yourself? Come on, some of you, all y'all don't can't, can't sing in the mic, but you can sing to yourself. Sing in the shower. Close the door. Okay? Everybody don't need a mic. Everybody don't know harmony. Everybody can't modulate. 
Everybody, don't, you don't know what, what, what tone your voice in. Everybody can't, can't, can't hold a long note. But everybody, you got to learn to sing to yourself. Encourage yourself. And spiritual songs, it says psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. A spiritual song will come out of your spirit. And not, not a soulless song. A soulless song is what you're feeling. Glory to God. But a spiritual song come out of your spirit. And in, 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 in your spirit is love and joy and peace and long suffering and patience and endurance and, and temperance. That's what's in your spirit. You got to sing song that says, I'm going to get through this. You got to sing song that say, God, God's working something right now. You got to sing song that say, I know I got the victory. You got to sing songs that say, when I come through this, there's going to be glory. Glory to God. You got to learn to sing to yourself and encourage yourself. And that's technically, you got to talk to yourself about your God. Psalm 91, we, most of us know the first verse. He that dwelt in the secret place of the Most High, uh, he that dwelt in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. But I love verse 2. Verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. What you say of the Lord is what you will see of the Lord. What you say of the Lord is what you will see of the Lord. He said, I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge. He's my fortress. I can run to him. He's going to protect me in the time of storm. He's my refuge. He's my fortress. He's my God. I'm going to keep trusting him. That's what I say about God. The God you say is the God you'll see. What you say about God is what you will see about God. You got to talk to yourself and encourage yourself through the word. 1 Corinthians 15, 15, 57 and 58, it says, Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, he said, knowing that, knowing that God gives you victory, therefore, be steadfast. <laughs> knowing that God gives you victory, then hang in there. Keep on doing what you know is right. Be immovable. I'm not going to be moved from my position of faith. I'm not going to be moved from my position of trust. I'm not going to be moved from my positive confession. So I'm going to be steadfast, unmovable, and I'm always going to be abounding. I'm not going to go, I'm not retreating. I'm not going to do less for the Lord. I'm going to do more for the Lord. I'm not going backwards. I'm going forward. I'm not going out. I'm going in. I'm coming in. I'm not going down. I'm going on. Glory to God. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. You see that? He says your labor is not in vain. He said, why do you know you, your labor is not in vain? Because the preceding verse said he's going to give you the victory. <laughs> My praying is not in vain. God's going to give me the victory. I'm sure that, I mean, e even, even as we've been praying for Mr. Angel, come on now. I mean, we want 24-hour turnaround. We want it to happen today. We want to happen this week, this month. And a lot of us, we good. We good because we sprinters. But sometimes this faith journey is a marathon. Sometimes this faith journey is a 5K. Sometimes this faith journey is little by little and step by step and day to day and month to month. And you don't want to hear it, but sometimes year to year. Even as we're in the midst of this building project, I have to, sometimes I get off social media. Look at all these young millennials' churches. They done built this and built that in their 30s. Hey, here I am getting ready to build the biggest thing, almost 60. And I got to keep myself encouraged. And then I, was, I told you I was around Bishop Jakes a couple weeks ago, and uh, he, he, he was right over by me when he said it. He said, he said, the reason why you're not finished yet, because you're not supposed to be finished yet. He, he was taking the thoughts right out of my, right out of my prayer time, out of my, out of my mouth and my thought. By now, I ought to be finished this. By now, I shouldn't have to, I, I, come on, I ought to be coasting now. Come on now. But now, he said, the reason why you're not finished yet, because you're not supposed to be finished yet. Come on, so you got to, if I ain't finished yet, it don't mean I ain't supposed to finish. It means I got to keep on running. 
Come on, this is a marathon. Huh? Come on, can curse somebody and say, come on, it's a marathon. It's a marathon. It's a marathon. It's a marathon. You got to get yourself together. You got you to get your second win. You have to pace yourself. No, 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 no. You, no. We don't have time for you to sit down right now. Come on, get yourself together. Little by little, step by step, but you got a finish line, and you got to keep on going. 2 Corinthians 2.14 says, now thanks be to God. Now thanks be to God. Ooh, I like Lord, thank you, Lord. How, can, can, I, can, I, can, I flip, can I flip that around? Uh, give God thanks now. Thanks be to God now. See, a lot of times you want to thank God after you get through it. He said, but now thanks be to God. <laughs> Why, why can I give him thanks and praise now? Because he gives me the victory. I'm going to give God thanks right now because he's given me the victory. Hallelujah. You know, I mean, I mean when, 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 when you know you're due to inherit something, come on, you can, it, can, it, can, it can make you run on a little longer because you know there's going to be something there in the future. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. And the Amplified says, makes us conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. Makes us conquerors. God will give you victory and make you a conqueror. Can I tell you, there is no conquering without battle. Nobody just lets you conquer them. You're not a conqueror if you didn't have to fight. Great victories come through great battles. David had to talk to himself. He had to encourage himself in the Lord. 1 Samuel 30 tells us he comes back to the camp and the Amalekites come back to Ziklag and the Amalekites had taken all their wives and taken all the children and people got mad at David because you're the one who told us to leave here. We should have been here. We're following your directions. And the Bible said the people spake of stoning him. They want to kill David. It's something people can be funny, y'all. People can be your, your lovers today and your haters tomorrow. Keep on living. People can be your friend, friends today and not friends. I got a friend. I, I thought it was my friend. I got a friend. I still don't even know what happened. We were friends for, for, for 40 years, and he stopped talking to me. And I believe because I, I, I said something to him or, or corrected him or confronted him. Can I tell you something? If you, if you got a friend who can't tell you the truth, you, you, you don't want a friend. You want a cheerleader. Everybody ought to have somebody in your life if nobody else says it, now, no, you was wrong for that. See, some of y'all, some of y'all, your, your marriage is messed up because you talk to everybody who sided with you. You go, you go to your single girlfriend, you know, he make me so mad sometimes, I think about leaving. Child, if I was you, I would leave him. They ain't got no man. They just want you to be like them. You need, you need somebody who get in your face and say, no, you're wrong for that. As a matter of fact, you shouldn't even be out here with us. You need to take your hips home right now and go what you need to do what you need to do for your husband. You need some boys who say, man, you can't be hanging out here with us now. You marry. You got to go home. We can hang out. You can't. Come on, you, you need some people in your life who are going to be friends who tell you the truth. Paul says, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? So David sometimes had to, had to encourage himself. People who were his friends loving him and supporting him. They wanted to stone him. But the Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. How do you encourage yourself? Talk to yourself. And say, I'm not going to stay in this situation. I'm getting up and I'm coming back. The woman with the issue... At, it's your blood. There's a key, there's a key uh, a characteristic, there's a key point to how she got healed. She had been sick for 12 years, hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging as a woman for 12 years. According to Jewish law, she was unclean. Unclean meant she couldn't be in the same bed with her husband. Meaning her husband now, more likely, she's lost her husband. She's lost her children. Nobody can be around her because she's considered unclean. She's not even supposed to be out in society. 
they were treating her like we would like, like they're probably treating these people with, with, with the coronavirus today. She's being quarantined, but she said something. She said, I know they don't want me to be here. Nobody gonna understand, and I can't tell anybody what I'm about to do. She said, but I'm gonna get in this press. I'm going to get in this crowd. I know I got to break some rules. I'm going to have to go against society. I'm going to have to go against norms. I'm going to have to go against tradition. I'm going to get next to Jesus, and when I touch him, I'm going to be healed. If I can touch the hem of his garment, and the Bible said she said that to herself. What was she saying? I've been in this situation for 12 long, but I'm about to have a comeback. Look at somebody say, today is my comeback day. Oh, come on now. So li li listen to how Paul, I got to give quick. Listen to how Paul encouraged himself. 2 Corinthians 3 and 6, Paul encouraged himself by saying this. He said, I know sometimes he felt inadequate. He said, but God's made me an able minister. <laughs> He's made me an able minister. Come on, all the ministers say, God's made me an able minister. Uh, look, 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 what, look how Paul encouraged himself again in Acts 20 and verse 24. He said, I, I know I'm threatened and, and people say they're going to do this to me and that to me and they're going to do this and they're going to persecute me. But look what he says in Acts 20, 24. None of these things move me. <laughs> I know you're going through some stuff. You got to make up your mind. None of these things move me. Why? I'm going to be steadfast, unmovable, bound in the work of the Lord. Watch this. Paul kept encouraging himself. He encouraged himself again in Philippians 1 and 19. He says, for I know it shall turn, this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and through the supplication of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. You hear what he said? He said, I I'm going through something right now, but I know it's about to turn. Come on, look at somebody around you and say, it's about to turn. It's about to turn. He said, I, I, I know, oh my God, my God. He, he didn't say, I hope. He said, I know this is going to turn. I, I know I'm not going to stay in this situation. I know I'm not going to stay broke. I know I'm not going to stay sick. I know I'm not going to stay bound. I know I'm not going to stay depressed. I know I'm not going to stay in lowly bar. I know I'm not going to stay broke. I know I'm not going to stay in poverty. This thing's about to turn. You got to keep believing God. You're going to have a comeback. It's about to turn. It's about to turn. It's about to turn. I told you in the beginning of, 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 of last year, a USC football for last game, it was a bowl game not in, the, in the very beginning of 2019, and we played, played Virginia up at, up at, uh, up at uh, 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 the stadium, uh, Bank, Bank of America Stadium in, in Charlotte. And I mean, I mean, they were boy, they were they were they were beating the brakes off us. They was, just, they, I mean, Virginia was just they, every everything about them was better. They, their band was better. <laughs> I, 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 we went to a restaurant later, and I saw some band members. As I was winning the restaurant, I said, I said, your band even beat us today. Yes, it, this was just a bad day. But, but there was this guy in, our, in that section where, where we were sitting. And every time they scored a touchdown, I think we, we scored one touchdown, I think. And then it was like, by now it's like 30-something to seven. And then and it's going up. And, 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 and there's a guy sitting beside me who was a, who was a, a, fan, a USC fan. He kept saying, we got them right where we want them. Somebody say, I got them right where I want them. <laughs> that got to be your attitude. This thing about to turn. I know it looks like the devil got me down, but I got them right where I want them. Because this thing's about to turn. Paul encouraged himself further in Philippians 4 19. He said, you know what? This is what I discovered. He said, I don't care what I'm going through, whether I got money, whether I'm broke, whether I'm up, I'm down. I can do all things. That's Philippians 4 13, rather. I can do all things through Christ, which what? Strength. I, come on, Paul said, I can, I can endure anything. I can come back from anything. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Then the third thing, the final thing, you got to come back. You got to learn how to recharge and refire. I have seen some really good teams that I have said to the underdog team, everything you're doing, you better get a good lead in the first half. Because when they go back in that locker room, they're about to recharge. They're about to refire. Any of y'all ever seen somebody who refired? You ever watch a game you're like, oh, this ain't the same team we saw first half. This is not the same box that we saw in the last round. This is not the same tennis player we saw 
in the last set. No, no. You got to make up your mind, I'm going to recharge and refine. When I say recharge and refine, I mean you got to do what you got to do to charge yourself back up. Okay? And which is why you need the Holy Ghost. Which is why you, because the Holy Ghost is your self-charging battery. The Bible says, for those of you who don't understand why we speak in tongues and pray in tongues, sometimes we pray in tongues, we speak in tongues praising God. There's a praise, I can show you that in the scripture, that's an action. Said, how, how, how is that we hear them speaking the wondrous works of God in our language? So they were praising God. But there's a praying in the spirit of self-edification. 1 Corinthians 14 and 4. It says, he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. But he that prophesied edified the church. So when I prophesy, I'm speaking in known language, that's for everybody. But sometimes when I'm speaking in tongues, I'm speaking for myself. He that speaks in an unknown tongue edified who? Himself. You got to know how to edify yourself, how to build yourself up. Can I tell y'all, okay, I'm, I'm not sorry, okay, can I, can I become a little transparent with you? There's sometimes I got to battle depression just like the rest of y'all. I look at things and look at what's ahead of me and things going on in my family and, and, and this has happened and you, get, and you get an uppercut and you get a side swipe. Come on now. Keep on living. You know what I'm talking about. Just when you think everything, oh man, we got this. We, it's smooth. It's smooth sailing from here. All of a sudden you get an uppercut. All, all, all of a sudden, come on, you, you got the green light. You're not doing anything wrong and you go, you just going about your business and all of a sudden you get T-boned. Come on now. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But even when that happens, you got to know how to reach charge yourself. There have been times I've had to cry and I've cried and I wring my tears out like you're mopping up a flood in the kitchen. Well, come on now. Well, y'all don't know about that. that I, I, we, we, we used to have a, we, a wash machine when I was in the project. It used to be in the kitchen. And, and, and we used to have the, we have, we have to have, we had a hose that was over the sink. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about that. And every now and then you forget to put the hose on the sink. And the thing go in the spin cycle and before you know, the water's all over the kitchen. And we, and we have to go get to mop and we have to wring it out and get and, and, and mop and wring it out and then we put newspaper all around. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And mop and wring it out, mop and wring it out. Sometimes you're crying and you, and you got to wring it out and then you got to get some more and wring it out and get some more and wring it out. Come on, till you make up your mind, I ain't crying about this thing no more. I cried my last tear yesterday, glory to God. And you got to learn how to pray your way back. So the Bible said when you're speaking an unknown tongue, you edify yourself. So after that crying, I got to get in the presence of God. God, now I need you to charge me up again. I need renewed strength. So I get in my prayer closet with myself and God, and I start praying in a language I ain't never heard before. Mandara bakasha, shete dara baka, e shata rabaka, e mama sheka raba, ora basa, sheke rabasa. What am I doing? I'm building myself up. Devil, you may have won the last round, but I didn't recharge myself. I got something for you now. Glory to God. The Bible said you gotta build yourself up on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Let me give you one bonus thing. Not only do you got to pray, pray your way back, you got to praise your way back. Ah, glory. Know why? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. What? The joy of the Lord is your strength. Pastor Marshall, we ended this, the, our, our prayer meeting the other night by waiting in the presence of God. Because those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So when I wait on the Lord, he restores my joy. Oh, y'all again. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. So when I wait on the Lord, I get new joy. Oh, I was depressed, but I waited on the Lord. I was down, but I waited on the Lord. And the joy of the Lord is my strength.
So this is what David said to encourage himself. Psalm 42 and 5. He said, why are you cast down? Oh, my soul, get yourself together. Why are you disquieted? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his continent. I think the message translation said, I'm going to praise him till he puts a smile on my face. Oh, glory to God. New Living Translation said, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I'm going to put my hope in God. I'm going to praise him again, my Savior, my God. And then finally, let me tell you this here. You got to come back because you got to know that there's, there's some cheerleaders in the stands. There's some folks that's rooting for you. The Bible tells us in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, and verse, I believe around verse 1, he says, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, a crowd of witnesses, strip off every weight that's slowing you down, that's tripping you up, and run this race with patience. Get yourself together. Come on. Abraham is saying, come on, come on, I made it, you made it. Joseph is saying, I know you've been tempted, but I made it so you can make it. Elijah is saying, I made it so you can make it. Isaiah is saying, I I made it so you can make it. Peter's saying, I made it. But when I got through, I strengthened my brother. I'm coming back. Somebody to make up your mind today that this is the last day I'm going to stay down in that situation. This is my comeback day. This is my comeback day. There's an art to this thing. I'm going to talk to myself. I'm going to encourage myself. I'm going to pray my way out. I'm going to praise my way out. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Devil, you're a liar. I will not die like this. Devil, you're a liar. I will not go out like this. Devil, you're a liar. You will not have my child. Devil, you're a liar. You will not have my marriage. Devil, you're a liar. You will not destroy my church. Devil is a liar. You will not cause me to file bankruptcy. God's going to bring me out. God's going to turn it around. I'm on my way up. I'm on my way back. Rise and shine. Your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen up on you. Shake yourself. Shake the dust off yourself. Swipe your tears. Leave the pity party and start a praise party. Stop feeling sorry about yourself and pat yourself on the back and encourage yourself and say, I'm coming through this. I'm coming out. I'm going through. I'm rising up. I'm going over. I'm going to knock it down. I'm going to knock it out. I'm going to come back. Somebody give God some praise. Praise God like you're coming back. Praise God like you're already back. Praise God like you know you got the victory. I've got the victory. I've got the victory. I've got the victory. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. I told Satan, get behind. Victory today is mine. In the name of Jesus, we got the victory. Tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee got to bow. Jesus. The name of Jesus, every tongue got to confess. Jesus, at the name of Jesus, demons got to flee. Jesus, at the name of Jesus, angels gonna fly. They are gonna move swiftly. They're hearkening to the voice of my word. When I decree a thing, it's gonna be declared unto me. I'm coming back. I'm coming out. I'm going over. I'm going through. Yes, I am. Somebody give God a praise. Woo! Hop out two people and say, I'm back, I'm back. I'm back. Sophia, hold now. 
Sophia home now. It's about to be some changes around here. The devil ain't running up around here no more. All this confusion got to stop. All this dysfunction got to stop.